plus vaste enquête jamais menée sur les dangers potentiels du téléphone portable. Une étude lancée dans 13 pays sur plusieurs millions d'utilisateurs. Les premières conclusions sont publiées aujourd'hui par nos confrères du soir en Belgique et elles sont inquiétantes. Le risque de développer certains cancers serait accru de 60 à 120% pour ceux qui utilisent un mobile depuis plus de 10 ans. Nous retrouverons François Baudonnet en direct de Bruxelles. François, c'est une étude sérieuse publiée dans un journal sérieux. Oui absolument, hein. le, le journal en question est même l'un des deux euh, principaux euh, journaux francophones belges et l'étude en question, eh bien c'est l'étude Interphone, elle a été menée, vous l'avez dit, dans 13 pays auprès de 14 000 personnes et ce depuis 8 ans. Alors on a ce matin effectivement cité par nos confrères du soir euh, des résultats provisoires. Que disent ces résultats provisoires D'abord que quand on utilise un téléphone portable depuis plus de 10 ans, le risque d'avoir un cancer au cerveau est, je cite, significativement accru. Ensuite en ce qui concerne le gliome qui est une sorte de tumeur au cerveau, eh bien le risque d'en développer un est deux fois plus important quand on utilise un téléphone téléphone mobile là encore depuis plus de 10 ans. Et il semblerait enfin qu'il y ait un rapport entre le côté de la tête où l'on utilise le téléphone portable et le côté où apparaîtrait la tumeur. Alors pour autant, les, les, les scientifiques qui sont à la base de cette étude ne sont pas aussi alarmistes. Ils ne disent pas, attention, clairement, le téléphone portable est cancérigène. Mais ils rappellent que les enfants ne doivent pas l'utiliser et que l'oreillette est un moindre mal. Depuis son apparition sur le marché, les études se succèdent et la plupart du temps, elles se contredisent. À chaque fois, le risque de cancer est évoqué, parfois pour être démenti. Et ce qui est sûr, c'est que le mobile est utilisé par des milliards de personnes dans le monde. On imagine donc l'enjeu de telles enquêtes. <rire> Nathalie Sapena. Salut chérie, qu'est-ce qu'on mange ce soir N'importe où et à tout moment. Le téléphone portable est utilisé par plus de 50 millions de personnes en France pour 600 millions d'heures de conversation par an. Avec une inquiétude récurrente, y a-t-il des risques avec ces ondes puissantes si proches de la tête et du cerveau Les études se multiplient, certains chercheurs alertent. Comme cette publication israélienne l'an dernier qui a montré un possible lien entre téléphone portable et un cancer rare des glandes parotides pour les gros utilisateurs. Nous sommes à un stade où nous avons suffisamment d'indications pour commencer à étayer les soupçons sur les risques du portable. Le téléphone mobile pourrait provoquer des cancers du cerveau, des nerfs acoustiques et des glandes salivaires. Mais pour l'instant, les études n'ont établi aucun lien direct. C'est pourquoi l'étude Interphone a été lancée, la plus vaste jamais réalisée sur 13 pays. Ses premiers résultats montrent une augmentation de certains cancers, mais il est trop tôt pour conclure comme le fait ce journal belge. Bonsoir, la question fait débat depuis longtemps sans qu'aucune réponse formelle puisse être apportée. Il n'empêche, cette étude laisse perplexe. Des chercheurs de l'ULB ont exposé des fourmis à des ondes GSM. Très vite, les animaux sont non seulement désorientés, mais ils perdent de 50% de leur capacité. Un résultat qui donne à réfléchir. Jimmy Meo et Kinerkan. L'expérience peut être réalisée très rapidement. Poser un téléphone portable au milieu d'une société de fourmis et déjà instantanément, les premiers effets sont visibles. Vous voyez que celle-ci n'a plus sa locomotion normale. C'est plus fait râler cette c'est parce qu'elle a été trop longtemps près de, des ondes. Ça, c'est une ataxie musculaire. Le premier système touché est le système nerveux. Mais le système nerveux dirige tout. Hein. Il dirige la locomotion, il dirige la perception des signaux émis par les autres, il dirige le comportement, etc. Donc tout est affecté. Les capacités d'apprentissage des fourmis exposées au générateur d'ondes sont affectées de 50% par rapport à la normale. Et même avec une période de récupération, elles ne retrouvent que 60% de leur capacité de mémorisation. J'ai éteint le générateur, elles ont récupéré un peu et ont pu apprendre, mais n'ont plus jamais réatteint leur niveau initial. Il en est de même pour cette fourmi exposée aux ondes du GSM. Si on arrête tôt l'expérience, elle va récupérer. Si on continue, elle va mourir. Les dangers pour l'homme sont aussi à prendre au sérieux. Par exemple, l'oreille à laquelle on colle notre téléphone est très sensible. Imaginez les structures que nous avons dans l'oreille. Nous avons des cellules ciliées dans l'oreille. Déjà dans l'oreille moyenne, la trompe de stache, mais après pour l'équilibre, pour le son, ce sont des cellules terriblement fragiles. Les conseils, éloignez votre appareil, pas d'utilisation pendant trop longtemps. Mr. Barry Trower, it's a fantastic pleasure to be here. It has been quite a complicated travel coming here actually, but it's very, very nice to be here and it's very important what we're going to discuss and what you have to say. So thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah, it's my pleasure, sir. My pleasure. During the last few years I've been thinking a lot about uh, Shakespeare. He wrote in Prince Hamlet that there's something rotten in the state of Denmark. And of course it's in the state of the world. Something is very terrible wrong. And then we have this former leading scientist in Denmark called Jeanette Kui. She used to, to teach at Aarhus University. And she got the message from the National Health Board in Denmark that she was allowed to say everything 
but that microwaves are dangerous. And that leads me to you. Later on, I talked to her and she told me that she believed that the Danes are part of an experiment to be brainwashed by the use of microwaves. And now they believe that they are the most happy people in the world, the Danes. I would like to know from you about children, because children, I think, is the most uh, precious we've got. It's the future. And I would like to start this interview about we need the parents to realize how dangerous this really is, because it seems like most have not got it yet. Right. <clears throat> this is going to be a big answer. It's okay. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, <clears throat> I had an appointment with one of our ministers. Uh, he's the minister for schools. And he wanted me, this was concerning Wi-Fi in schools and its effect on children. And I'm sorry, I'm a slow speaker, I'm afraid we're going to use a lot of taper. Uh, I speak very slowly. <laughs> so the minister wanted me to take something to him that wasn't complicated, uh, wasn't more than two or three sides of paper that explained everything. And I thought about this, <clears throat> and in the end, I did a cartoon, in this cartoon, and I think this is the most relevant piece of paper, not because I've written it, but because it actually refers to every single child in the world and I think that the ministers the minister I spoke to was quite shocked uh, now <clears throat> what I'm explaining in this what I'm explaining that there are two different things with schools okay? now the first is if you have uh, a school child could you imagine if you have let's say you have a little girl and I'm talking about girls at the moment, that there is a case for boys, but it, it's different. <clears throat> <clears throat> now, if you have a little girl in school, let's say 10 years old, all of her eggs that are to be fertilized are in her body. If she sits with Wi-Fi in front of her, the Wi-Fi is going through the eggs. And what most scientists do not know, and certainly government officials do not know, is that the DNA in these eggs can absorb 10 times more radiation than other DNA in the body. So even if you have a safety level, which there isn't for children anyway, even if you have a safety level, it is... 10 times out, straight away. So you are irradiating the eggs inside your little girl. Now, what that means is, if your little girl has DNA damage, and it is likely, we know in the Cold War, uh, women were experimented on deliberately to see the effect of low-level microwave on pregnant women. <clears throat> and we know that 47.7% of the women had miscarriages uh, in the first eight weeks of pregnancy. So, and there are lots of experiments, so we do know that these eggs absorb radiation. <clears throat> now, if your little girl has DNA damage, when she grows up and has a baby, if that baby is a little girl, the genetic damage will come out in that little girl, any genetic damage. When she has a baby, your grandchild, the genetic damage will be there because it is irreparable. It can never, ever be repaired. <clears throat> so what we are doing with our children in primary school is we are saying every single 
daughter that you have could have genetic disease until there is no more female line. So it's not just children today, it is their children, their children, their children. It's going to go on forever. Uh, and we're risking this all because we don't want to buy a piece of wire about that long and plug it into the wall. That's what we're risking. But that's only the first stage. <clears throat> now, I've been a teacher for many, many years, adults uh, and sixth form, you know, pre-university. And I have had students which are pregnant. And it is legal in this country for 16-year-old girls to be pregnant. The age of sexual content, uh, consent is 16. In fact, I've taught girls 15 and 14 who've even been pregnant. Now, the next phase of this drawing comes when, if you have, let's say your daughter is pregnant. Now, the, if you can imagine your daughter is pregnant and inside the fetus of your daughter, which will be your grandchild, inside that fetus, the eggs are forming if it is a little girl because they are born with all of their eggs. So the eggs are forming and in the first 100 days your grandchild's eggs are forming. But for the first maybe 50 days your daughter probably would not know she was pregnant. She wouldn't take any precautions. But also for the first 100 days and this is, again is what the scientists don't realize <clears throat> is in the fetus or the embryo there is no defense mechanism in the body in the baby to protect it from radiation you have defense mechanisms of uh, protein 53 nuclear core complex in the, that help fight radiation, antioxidants. Uh, the embryo doesn't have any of those. So what you are doing, if somebody is pregnant, you are irradiating a person who has no defense against microwaves. And again, a lot of people don't realize that when we are in that first 56 days, we are inside out. The, our organs are on the outside of the body because at a stage later on after 100 days or so we actually turn inside out again so the skin is on the outside. So you have the organs on the outside and they are taking all of the radiation and all of the damage and this then will make the baby uh, or could make the baby quite genetically damaged with other damage as well, brain damage, cellular damage, whatever damage. And it's not until that fetus is born and then grows up and has another baby that you may get that. So what we're doing here is we're, we are really destroying many successive generations now. Uh, just by having Wi-Fi in schools and it doesn't stop there with children now there are uh, in in you you have about uh, four and a half thousand different biological structures making your body Children have about 4,050 making their body. Now, <clears throat> children are not small adults. They are neurologically and physiologically immature. They have very little defense pain. Just to give you an idea, <clears throat> the blood-brain barrier that protects the brain from toxins. 
in a child that takes around 18 months to form. The nervous system, the nervous system in the body uh, that controls all of our muscles, all of our movement, everything, that takes around 22 years to form properly. <clears throat> there are 122 different layers, if you like, of insulation around the wiring in the body <clears throat> that take 22 years. And it is known, it's, it's laid down by a process called protein synthesis. And protein synthesis is known to be affected by microwaves. The immune system takes around 18 years to develop in a child and again it is known that the first symptom of microwave uh, syndrome is an attack on the uh, attack on the immune system. So what we are really doing by unregulating or deregulating or having no regulation for microwaves, we are really putting a very, very great risk on every single generation. And if it were just me sitting here and nobody else in the world agreed, I might think, well, maybe I'm wrong. But in just the last few months, uh, we know the, what I said to you about pregnancy and childbirth. We know that is right because there are mammalian species, cats, dogs, mice, rabbits. <clears throat> there are mammalian species who do not take 20 years to have a generation. They can do it in one year or two years. And vets have already started publishing papers about uh, birth defects, lots of different birth defects, miscarriages, all sorts of problems with birth. And they specifically publish this is due to low level radiation from microwaves. So we know it started happening with the animal kingdom. We know just in the last few months there is a 3,000% increase in cancers in children in China, a 21% increase that has been found in brain tumours, I think across Australia. Uh, there are several published papers now, <clears throat> and I think the most frightening is from the Russian National Radiation Committee with UNICEF which is the children's charity.